Hello everyone, this is Saurav Singh and today I'm going to discuss about UPSC, especially about history. Uh, if you'll see, history is a very important section which comes in prelims, mains, as well as some sections where you can get help uh, from history in uh, interview also. Sometimes some question comes which is very much related to history. Uh, I need to discuss about the importance of history in each of these phases. For example, if we'll discuss about history in prelims. Uh, as you know that in prelims we have two kind of sections, GS paper 1 and GS paper 2. Exactly, it is GS paper 2, it's not CSAT. We have just evolved a term CSAT, but UPSC never used CSAT. But today we are going to focus about GS paper 1 only. In GS paper 1, you have most probably you have around 100 questions in which you will be getting around 20 questions directly from history. In history, we have some sections like ancient, medieval, modern and art and culture. In these all four sections, most of the questions, traditionally we have seen most of the questions comes from modern India. For example, if there are 20 questions, in that you will be getting modern India question from 12 to 13 modern India question. After this, you will be getting question from art and culture, then ancient India and the least number of question you will be getting from medieval India. So what you have to do, you have to focus on each and every section, you can't skip any of the section because this is UPSC, you don't have luxury to skip any of the section from where even one question is coming in your exam. But most question comes from modern India. Even in modern India, dear student, most of the question comes from the section national movement. National movement is from 1905 to 1947. But if you'll see modern India section, some question you'll be getting from national movement section and after that you'll be getting question from social religious reforms and movement, for example, Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Dhyanan Saraswati related. After this you'll be getting question from movements, for example, non-cooperation movement, Quit India movement and all. So if you'll see modern India, if you are preparing it very strategically, then you can easily uh, hit on those sections from where traditionally uh, we have seen UPSC uh, is asking question or some of the favorite field of UPSC. After modern India in prelims, we should jump over art and culture. But dear student, you can't do art and culture section until or unless you are not completing your ancient medieval because in art and culture if you are getting question from Gupta period, for example Gupta architecture, but before doing Gupta architecture you must know what was Gupta period and all. Similarly, if you want to know about the tombs and the structures and the Sufi movement and everything of medieval era, you should read medieval India first. So you should never ever read art and culture without doing ancient and medieval. So what should be the process of preparation for prelims? First you should do modern India section, then ancient and medieval and then only you should jump for art and culture. This is what we were talking about prelims. Now I want to jump on medieval. In medieval section, dear student, history question comes from GS paper 1. GS paper 1 is of 250 marks where you have 20 questions. In that 20 question, you will be getting around 12 question, at least 12 to 13 question directly from history. New elements which are getting added in mains are post-independence and world history. In prelims, you don't have any question from post-independence and world history. So, before preparing your mains, you should be okay with your art and culture, ancient, medieval and modern. In mains question, if you will go, you will again get more number of questions from modern India. But in modern India, in mains exam, question comes from two, three special sections. First section is ideology based section. For example, if you are doing modern India, you should focus on ideology based question. For example, ideology of Gandhiji, ideology of Rabindranath Tagoreji, ideology of all important leaders because UPSC is very much interested in knowing ideas of these personalities. Many of the years, last some previous years, we have seen comparison between ideas question has been asked. For example, comparative ideology between Gandhiji and Ambedkar, comparatively ideology between Gandhiji and Subhash Chandra Bose. So, first section is this, means you should work on this section before doing any kind of uh, preparation uh, in modern India. After this, you should be working in modern India on effect based question. For example, if non cooperation movement happened, what was its effect? Never ever you will 
UPSC question coming from the causes of these events. Every time UPSC was to want to know what was the effect of these uh, events. And sometimes UPSC is also interesting in asking imaginary question. Imaginary question means what would have been happened if Gandhiji would not have been there in non-cooperation movement. Now you have to imagine. So this is completely analytical based question only reading books and remembering the facts is not going to help you in a uh, mains exam. Means you should be very very much analytical and here in youth destination we always focus on giving analytical idea about all the topics. We never focus on giving facts only. We should we, uh, we always try to give you every aspect of an event so that any question which is coming on the, that topic you can analyze, you can link it upon that. So this is something very uh, unique about our youth destination. Now um, similarly in men's exam dear student if you will jump on art and culture section uh, from last previous some years we can see that question are coming from art and culture and again conceptual based question. So I will say that whatever art and culture you study for your prelims in men's you have to work upon its analytical figure. So in men's we have very constructive way of preparation in a youth destination we go very step wise and we try to cover each and every topic so that when on that big day in men's if you are sitting there you can easily link up all the things so that you can easily write it down. So in men's uh, GS paper 1 it could be very scoring student if you are getting very good hold over this subject that is called history. Now after GS paper 1 you don't ever think that your work is done in history because many a times we see that your essay writing got very influence if you have very good idea about history. Any essay needs a very good history understanding. For example any question is coming like uh, UPS's favorite topic in essay writing is women. They always ask question on women. For example any essay has been asked women empowerment kind of thing. You can't write women empowerment essay until unless you don't have any idea about role of women in Indian history. For example if you start writing essay you will write that these were the famous personality Upali and Ghosa who were the important personality in ancient India. In medieval India there was Rajya Sultan. So without knowing this all historical aspect you can't write a good essay. Similarly student if you are writing ethics let me give you some idea about ethics you can't write good ethics answer if you don't take example from your history. To support your uh, argument in ethics, you need to write some good uh, events and good personality and like that related things from history. So even in ethics paper, you need to have very good understanding about your history. So history is not at all a subject which you can take for easy or for granted. Now many students think that, oh my god, history is so tough. It's very tough to remember events and personalities and all. You are right. But I will ask you to come at least visit one demo class of history and then only you can find it out that it is so easy and so um, interesting that you can easily remember all these things and the day, a day when you will be remembering or you will be understanding all the things you will find that you are going very easily in your prelims, your mains and ultimately qualifying interview and getting in the list. So this was something which I wanted to discuss about history, importance of history in your prelims, mains and interview. Now last thing I want to share you is there are four sections of history, ancient, medieval, modern and world. In these all four sections, you have to uh, take these all four sections separately in a separate way, it's separate strategy. You can't use single strategy in all these four sections. For example, in ancient India, most of the ancient India is based on facts. You should be focusing on remembering the facts when you are doing ancient India. But when you will jump to medieval, now more fact but less concept. Med modern India, more concept, less fact and world history, it is all about concept. So you should be dealing each every topic separately in a very different strategy and then only dear student history is not only something which, which is needed hard work it also needs smart work. So today I need to tell you that this is UPSC you can't go and take and book, buy a book and start reading and qualifying UPSC you need a very good guidance and here in with youth destination we are known for giving very smart guidance so that you can usually complete your history. This was all about history see you in next episode we will be dealing topic wise all the history topics okay thank you so much see you bye